Good evening. Welcome to Grand Blank Township Board of Trustees meeting for Tuesday, September 19th. If we could all rise for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk Robertson, may you, can you call the roll? I would be happy to, Mr. Supervisor. Trustee Hugo? Here. Trustee Fike? Here. Trustee Raritan? Here. Trustee White? Here. Treasurer Kilmer is absent. Myself, of course, I'm here. Supervisor Bennett? Yes. Six members present, a quorum. And now I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda. Motion by Ms. Hugo. Motion by, by Hugo, supported, supported by, by Fike. Correct. Very good. Trustee Raritan? Yes. Trustee Hugo? Yes. Trustee White? Yes. Trustee Fike? Yes. Myself? Yes. Uh, Supervisor Bennett? Yes. Six nothing. Motion passes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. First up on the agenda, Chief Rennie. Who's Chief? Good evening. We, we want public comment first, Mr. Supervisor? I'm sorry. I screwed up. We're going to do public comment first, and then we'll okay. do you, Chief. I'm sorry. Okay, first up, we have uh, Mr. Wayne Rumble. Mill wheels. Here you go, Clerk Thank Robertson. you. Good evening. Good evening. Wayne Rumble. Um, what I wanted to comment about was Russell Street. They just paved it. What I'm hoping is that they're not going to use the same people to pave my street that they paved that street. It's in worse shape now than it was before. Mm. That's my comment. Russell Street's in worse shape now? Oh, yes. Now you got divots this deep where the manholes were at. They didn't raise any of them. Okay. Now you play dodge the manholes. All the way down the street, there's four of them, I believe. Okay, so noted, and we'll mention that to the Road Commission. Okay, uh, Miss uh, Linda Schultz on Mill Wheel. On Mill Wheel Drive, we're like a big bus, big bus spot where it goes by. I did not hear what happened at the the uh, meeting at the school. Like you were going to try to ask them, they can do what they want with the buses. So. Um, my concern is, and I don't know the wording for it, but it's the um, specs for the road. If our road's going to be trampled by buses like it has been for the last 40 years, then we need some kind of guarantee that the specs are going to be made for them to be traveling, for trucks, whatever, they're considered trucks, to be traveling down our road that they travel so much. Because we're paying this for, what, 15 years? And I hate to see the roads. I know we're going to try to like do stuff to it and pour stuff over it, whatever, but, you know... If we don't have a better road, at least going down there where all the buses, I know buses do go all around, but they go down ours. I mean, all the time, a lot, a lot, a lot. So I'm concerned about that. Are we going to have certain specs that are going to hold those buses for all those years we're paying? And uh, I think that's it for now. Okay. Thank you. Okay, anyone else here to make comment? Okay, we will close public comment, and now we'll have uh, Chief Rennie come up. Sorry about that, Chief. Okay, thank you. So uh, last May, uh, I had the pleasure of meeting Officer Grace Corthals. At the time, she had applied for our cadet program, which we were just getting started from the ground level. She came in, did a great interview, uh, really sold herself how she wants to be involved in public safety ever since she was five years old. Um, it's always been a dream of her, and she is extremely dedicated to the Gram Grambling community. Uh, so we brought her on as a cadet, as her time with the cadet. Uh, we could see that she had extreme drive. She built relationships with members of our police department, and she was very active in the community as well. So we ended up uh, saying, you know what, let's give Grace a shot. You know, let's send her through the police academy with the help of MCOLs. Uh, sponsoring that grant. We sent her through to Police Academy and she's our first ever sponsorship through the Police Academy that uh, Grambling Township has had, at least to the best of my knowledge. So I, I'd like to introduce you to Officer Grace Corthals. Yeah. 
Come over here. Um, so, Grace, we're going to do the oath of office, but prior to that, I want you to introduce who you're going to call up to do the badge pinning for you and why you're calling them up. So I'm calling up my uh, mom and dad, Jeremy Corthos and April Corthos. Um, I'm having my parents put my badge on me because, well, they haven't gotten to do it yet. And I think it'd be very special for them to get to have the opportunity to do this because they've seen me, you know, grow up and waiting for this moment for a very long time. So. Absolutely. Very good. Very good. Come on up. You want to stand right over here, Grace? Mr. Corthos, I'll you, hand sir. that to you. All right, Grace, if you could raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear. I do so solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of this state. And the Constitution of this state. And that I will faithful, faithfully perform. And I will faith, faithfully perform. The duties of the office of police officer. The duties of the office of a police officer. In and for the township of Grand Blank. And County of Genesee. County of Genesee. And state of Michigan. And the state of Michigan. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. All right. Mr. Corthos. been a while since we had to get the band-aids out. <laughs> it's easier hanging on a locker. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hey, congrats. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That's always always makes for a great uh, start to a board meeting. Yes. With that, uh, we will move to our public hearing, and uh, the board will hold a public hearing to consider adopting the proposed assessment role. Mr. Laddie. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. So tonight's the night when we've got our proposed uh, assessment role for the Wishing Well project, and um, you recall we talked about this, a lot of the details of the project, and, and we talked about um, um, the costs, and we also had discussion. I think one of the one of the members of the subdivision um, initiated a conversation with the uh, school district about the possibility of having the buses um, have different routes. And I, I believe that my take on that was that there was some progress made. They were going to look into that. I don't know if they committed to anything just yet, but they at least know what the residents want and they know why the residents want it. And we hope that they'll. Um, uh, continue to consider that and make adjustments in the future. Um, what we have tonight, though, is, is the confirmation of the assessment roll, the amount of $3,690. Um, that is roughly uh, $13,872 per parcel. It's, it can be divided over 15 years if you want. You can, if you have the means to pay it off earlier, you can and save interest. If you don't, you can spread it out over 15 years. Um, there are also one of the things that, that we should know is that there may be an opportunity for this amount to be reduced uh, by a program that the County Road Commission has created where we put up a 10% contribution and then the, the Road Commission does as well. That amount is not reflected in this, uh, in the assessment role because that program, while I, I, it, it's almost certain is still a contingency, right? We still have, the, the program has to be offered by the Road Commission. 
um, the funds have to be available and then we have to commit to it. So I think the good news is that this amount may come down in the future. Um, so if there are any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer. Otherwise, we can hear from the residents and, and see what they have to say. Any board members have any questions or concerns? The, the 13,000, uh, but we, there might be 20% taken off. Correct. So, Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, that would but, be I mean that, okay. Um, also, and I, I didn't, I, I, when I prepared this resolution, I did not go through and parse the, the estimate. And the, other, the good news is the Road Commission is pretty good at, at their estimates coming in where they expect. Um, there was, I think, a little bit of extra set aside in this, uh, in this amount because we have, but bonding is a little more complicated because of the dollar amount. In fact, we had to hire actually uh, a financial advisor to assist in the bond issue. And I think we may have reserved a little more money than we need in that. So, so if, again, that up to 20% occurs, that's great. But I think we'll also see a, a reduction if our bond costs come in a little, a little lower as well. Okay. Any other questions from board members, concerns? Okay, at this time we will open the microphone for public comment with regard to this project. Anybody here to speak on that? Yes. Um, I, did have, I did have questions about it. I don't know how all this stuff works. I know it says like 15 install, annual installments. Does that have to go, if we still have a house payment, does that have to go in our property tax payment? Or is it due at that time and I can, you know, I can come up and pay that yearly myself? Yes. Figure a date that I pay it and I, and I get up here and do it? It'll be on your tax bill, your winter tax bill. Yeah, see, mine's in my house payment, so who do I get a hold of? I have to get a hold of my mortgage com company if I want to pay that separately myself to keep my stuff oh, where it's at, you know? That's a good question. Because, you know, it goes up all the time, so you're paying a little bit so your mortgage payment don't go up too much. Well, I'm trying to keep mine down, got it down, want to keep it down. But adding that on and then, you know, the property, you know, you have taxes, things you vote on, millages, of course you're going to vote for them, and so it keeps going up itself. I would like to keep this separate if I could for as long as I can, you know? We, what I would recommend is we'll get with the um, deputy treasurer who prepares the winter tax bills because what we'll do is automatically the payment would go on to the winter tax bill and mm -hmm. we usually push those out like the beginning of november for that right. december issue if you have paid that years before the tax bills are created then it won't go on to your tax bill Okay, so kind of like every September, I, I should to be safe. Yeah. September when it starts, then I'm going to make sure every September. You'd I have, have to come, make sure that, you know, set a reminder for yourself, come in uh -huh. to the Treasurer's Department, okay. and let them know, look, I want to pay my special assessment so that it doesn't go on to my winter taxes. All right. If they see it as paid for that year, uh -huh. they won't automatically put it yeah, on. In my mind, that would be a good help, a great help to me, and maybe some of the others that do still have, you know, house payments too. Um, also, I don't understand the like, interest. You know, and we pay a lot of interest on a lot of different things, and you know, we get windows, blah blah blah, whatever. But I don't understand how that's playing into it. We don't know what it is yet, right? Is it going to be variable? Is it just going to be fixed? Is it? It'll be fixed. Fixed. And, we're, and so one of the one of the things we're trying to do is we've we've hired some consultants to get us the lowest interest rate, and and they're not as low as they used to be, obviously, uh, but it's still better than than the retail interest rate that you get on a loan or something. And so we won't know that probably uh, until we get closer into the project. Um, we're, we're happy to provide that information to you guys when we find out about it. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, but yeah, we just we just don't know it yet because yeah, we haven't hopefully borrowed Hopefully the interest rates don't keep on climb, climb, climb too high before you lock into something. Mr. Laddie, what have what, uh, been some of the recent interest rates that we've gotten on some of our bonds? I, 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 my recollection is sort of yeah, averaging five. around three. Maybe higher, maybe a little bit higher than that. We were a little bit higher than that when we did Baldwin Road, and so it just depends on where the bond market is currently. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously for municipal bonds, where we get the break is that the people who purchase those bonds, it's tax exempt because it's a municipal bond, so that's what makes them attractive. Um, but usually, we get a pretty good interest rate because of that. Okay, so when you know that, let me see. I just lost my train of thought here. No, so when we have a so if we have a fixed interest rate, you know, bear with me. I'm not I'm not an accountant. I'm not good at this stuff anyway. Math was not my thing. Yeah. But anyway, it, our payments will start. There'll be a certain amount of money 
every year. It'll be the same every year that we're going to pay. That's going to be because it, it's fixed. They'll be able to spread it out, and we'll know the payment. Every year will be the same until you pay it off. Correct. Or unless you pay it off before. Correct. All right. And um, the buses still are going through, just to let you know. We haven't had, a, we haven't had in, them start to slack off or anything yet. And um, I had one more question, and doggone it now. I can't remember what it was. Feel free uh, to email us, too. Huh? You can email us. Okay, too. I still can after the meeting is done. I still can do I that. Cards out there, Mr. Lehman. Right. Cards out there. You can email us your questions. Okay, I guess I'll have to do that because I can't remember what it was. Fine. <laughs> okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yes. I have a question about the subdivision. If you can give us your name and address because we don't have a comment card mm, for Jennifer you. Jennifer Bales, 51. Jennifer. Bales, B A L E S. The address is 5106 Mill Wheel Drive. Mill wheel. So I, I got the letter. Um, I don't have it with me, but is there was that just one proposal that was set in place for the the numbers that we've seen? And if so, are we able to see those numbers to see where our, the money is going? Well, so what we, what this number is based on is the estimate from the engineering department in the at the county road commission. As I mentioned earlier, they're pretty good at, at those estimates, and there is. Uh, a sheet that they have that reflects those numbers, and I, I think we can get that to you. I, I, that would be nice. I would like to see where our money is going. Well, that's just an estimate. The, that's it fine. It would for bid, and then yeah. So I guess is it the first proposal that you're taking? Have there other have there been other proposals set in place, or are you guys just going with the first one? So the so the road commission will be in charge of bidding the project, and so there'll be hopefully there'll be multiple bidders, and then they'll select the, the lowest qualified bidder. So as a neighborhood, do we have a right to say and look at numbers, and then uh, can we have that decision as a neighborhood? You can't, and neither can we. Uh, it's all it's all it's up to the road commission. It's their it, they're essentially they're in charge of that road. They technically own that road, and so they're the ones that are that are the directors of the project. They make those decisions. Okay, so how soon can we, as the neighborhood, see numbers, like an estimate? Well, you can see the estimate right away, right? I mean, again, that's what that... And where do I go to see that? Well, I think we can, we can either mail it to you or email it to you. Yeah. I, if you fill out one of the cards over there with your name and address on it, we'll, uh, um, we'll get you and, that. And, you know, I, I know the um, lady before me was saying about buses. There has been counted 40 buses in one day going up and down those roads. So you guys are resolving a, a temporary fix because those roads are gonna go right back to where they were. Um, you've got, the, you got two elementary schools over there and until that gets resolved, those roads are gonna be right back to where they started at. And I'm not saying that ro the roads are horrible, horrible. Um, but there's gotta be something that gets put in place as well. We had that discussion at one of the previous public hearings of the the road commission actually owns the road, and that's why they're the ones. That we basically are the financing arm for it. We we basically are the only ones that can collect property taxes, and so basically our 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 interest in this road paving project is actually to be able to collect the money for it. The road commission uh, will do the work. However, they can't collect money. We can. So our involvement is basically that we're going to be the ones that put it on your tax roll. And so that's our involvement in it. In terms of buses going down the street, um, whether or not the specs for the road are adequate for the buses, um, that's the road commission that sets the specs. You know, and the, the school board is one determines where the buses go. So well, how do we get involved? Because I know so I don't one of the I one never had a bus pick me up at the front right. of the house. I had to walk. One of the so. one of the residents in your neighborhood actually met with the with the school board. Okay. And that's who you need to speak with as a school board Munsell, members. If I remember correctly. What's that? Mr. Munsell, if I remember correctly. Yeah, uh, he's not on the board. He's probably a transportation director. No, he, no he's the oh, citizen involved. Oh, okay. It was the name of the, uh, okay, yeah, he's not he's here. The, his evening. name is in the record. Right. But one of your residents actually met with the school board and uh, discussed it with them, and they, they would be the ones you want to talk to about where they have their buses going and how many of them and all that jazz. So, as far as road specifications, that would be the road commission. Okay. I, um, one other question in regards to what the um, lady said in front of me about the paying the taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of elderly that live in the neighborhood, and they're all on a fixed income as well. But is like, 
Like she had mentioned, she doesn't want it into her house payment where we could come in and pay it yearly. Is there a way that it gets fixed into our escrows where our escrow could pay for it? That and who do we way, set yeah. that up with? That will be the way that it happens. Uh, she doesn't want it going into her escrow is what I understood. Okay. And so she was asking. We have, will we have an option when it comes No, it'll that? go on your escrow unless you do what uh, Mr. Lehman has suggested and come in and pay it early so that your mortgage company doesn't get that bill. If the mortgage company gets the bill, they're going to pay it, but they're also going to put it in your escrow. And so how, when do we find that information out? Like when, when do they send out tax bills? I guess I don't the dates the tax bills go out. The winter tax bill um, is the only time township taxes are collected on your winter tax bill, and that goes out the first week of December every year. Okay. And if you want to make if you want to make payments, if you want to make it before that tax bill goes out or gets sent to the printers in November, the treasurer's department you can come in. You could come in and pay it monthly if you wanted to by coming in to you know, see the cashiers, ask for the treasurer's department or deputy treasurer, let them know that you want to pay, uh, make a payment towards your special assessment because you don't want it to go to your escrow. If you do want it to go to your escrow, you can give your escrow company the heads up. Um, you know, this one will go out for bonds. You won't see a bill for this until December of 2024, correct? Yeah. And it and will it be payable by February 14th of 2025 would be the first time a payment would be due. What was that date again? February 14th of 2025 would be the first date of payment that tax payment would be due. Um, but if you pay it, you know, but it will be automatically in your tax bill, uh, which then will get sent to you. If you have an escrow account for that's picking up your taxes, they will get that tax bill because we'll send it to them like we always do. They'll see it and then they'll pay and adjust your payment uh, accordingly and you'll get the notice from your escrow company. But you can't avoid it. They will take payments here. They will work with you uh, right up until the tax bills go out. Once that tax bill goes out, um, then I'm not, you know, it's already going to be sent to your escrow company. How soon are you guys looking at doing the roads? It would be uh, if everything moves now, they can actually... Uh, they've got the engineer's estimate. They'll go into a design phase. They will send it out for bid sometime uh, this winter. It's expected to be a spring 2024 start uh, for the project. So you'd see it uh, sometime this spring that they would actually start doing the construction. And it's actually the road commission that oversees a project, not us. So when, when this takes place, um, if I wanted to sell my house, next year. I have to disclose this with the next buyers, That's correct? Correct. And how does it affect them? How does it affect us? Well, it, it's hard for us to say because it depends on the lender. So it would depend on the purchaser of your home if their lender is okay with absorbing it. Because we only bill it, we're going to bill it annually, right? So if you sold your house five years in, there's still 10 years left uh, on the balance. The a person purchasing your home would assume that balance, it will stay with them and they'll get billed annually for the remainder of the special assessment. Uh, but sometimes lenders can be a little tricky. They can say, hey, we'd like to have that paid up in, in full. Um, that's, that's between the you know, lending institutions, the banks. Most of them will allow that person to assume the special assessment wherever it is in that process. But it's hard for us to blanket say that that'll happen because it really depends on the lender. Okay, and I, I know you guys mentioned something about a fixed rate, interest rate. Is that all gonna be set in place when this proposal is, is done? It's not gonna be a floating interest, correct? Nope, the bonds will be sold at whatever interest rate, the best we, that our bond council and our bond advisors can do in the market. Um, we will know what it was sold for. They'll have the fixed amount. That will be the interest rate through the entire um, special assessment. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're um, for anybody is interest, Lady wants yep. For anybody's interest, the uh, school board um, actually will be meeting. Their next meeting is September 25th at 6:30 p.m. at the Perry Center. So September 25th at 6.30, the Perry Center boardroom. Everybody probably knows where the Perry Center is, right there at Bush and Saginaw Street. But September 25th at 6.30 is their board workshop. 
So I'd encourage you, if you have concerns with regard to how many buses are coming down your street or the path they're taking or whatever, um, I would address the uh, school board. Yes, ma'am. They're the ones that are going to decide the grade road of the road. commission meets a couple times a month. They just met today. Um, they meet right on right off uh, Saginaw Street and Flint. Um, Oakley Street is where their offices are. Actually, you go to their website. They have a schedule of their board meetings. Okay, and they're open to the public. To try to argue with the road and you know the specs on the road and all that kind of stuff is up to us to get with them to do. The the specs are are going to be the same no matter where you're at in the county. You know, unless you're not going to do uh, anything like that would be different on Maple or uh, that would be on our road? No. I mean, they won't offer that, you're saying? No. It's gonna, that would change the price entirely probably on their estimate. I don't believe they've, they've built anything special in for the buses. I could be wrong. I, I haven't looked at the, okay. the, the engineering for it, but uh, who knows? Maybe they okay. built something in. And I know you said something about this one of the times before. There's, there's a warranty with that? I've never. For the 15 years, so we don't have a warranty. If they no fall apart, just any road. keep paying and it fell apart. Okay. That sucks. Okay. <laughs> just trying to get it all clear here. Um, okay, so I have to get and a hold uh, of them. There's no warranty with your roads because the Road Commission owns that road. Obviously, it's in their best interest to make sure it doesn't fall apart. They're the ones who build the specs of what they need to yeah. see. They're the ones who accept the bid and go through and bet right. whoever's going to do it. The other thing is they give us a design life. The only reason we can go to 15 years is because the road commission said that this let us. road has a 20 year design life. Okay. Otherwise we'd only be at a 10 year uh, special assessment. So they're, they're saying that's, that their yeah, design that's life good. is designed to last. Yeah, years. just that their past hasn't been too great with our subdivision. I mean, they didn't really seem to care Until much about, about the roads before. You know. Until three years ago, it was only 10 years that they allowed you to pay. So uh -huh. you would have been looking at that same amount over 10 right. years. And, and there are people that aren't here tonight, but they're saying like, oh yeah. Grambling Township, they're getting a kickback on this deal. They're the ones getting a kickback. They're not here, some of my neighbors, but that's uh, what actually, the rumor out there. <laughs> actually, we're, we're, the kickback is us kicking money into the project. Right, that's, and, right. That's, and there's no, unless you got, unless that thing goes through, there's 10%, and then if the... the township uh, goes 10%. And then the um, Genesee County Road Commission gives 10%, right. then that's the way you guys would be helping out that way, too. Right. Okay. Up to $300,000. Yeah, up to 300000 total for the project but okay. it's also a limited pot so it's first come first serve but mm -hmm. um all right yeah the whoever's saying that we get a kickback actually um Did you tell them no previous years uh that 10 percent wasn't even available from us or mm -hmm. the county so all right okay i appreciate okay. it just addressing the rumors thanks you're welcome uh, mr supervisor yes uh, if i could i'd like to let's we, close public comment that, that's not quite yet well, i know there's some more comments that would like to make oh, and then we'll all right we'll let the citizen we go first Yep, and then we'll come to the board. Uh, Bruce Blevins, 6127 Waterford. If the parcel is owned by a nonprofit or a church, are they held accountable for this assessment or are they relieved of the. I'll defer to Mr. Laddie for that question. So, churches, and, it, uh, and again, depending on the charitable institution's purpose and use of the property, they, they may be exempt from general taxes, but the rule of thumb is that for special assessments, they're not exempt. Okay, any other public comment? Okay, seeing no further public comment, we will close public comment and bring it back to the board for further discussion. Just Mr. Rob, Clerk Robertson? Yes, thank you. I just wanted to read into the record. We have received some emails. Um, uh, David and Janine Smith uh, have, uh, uh, are uh, 5232 Wishing Well. I want to note their objections. Uh, Dale Van Curen, 5024 Wishing Well, uh, expressing uh, opposition. Uh, Robert and Suzanne Anderson, 5066, wishing well, um, uh, objecting. Uh, Christina Bowen, uh, 5029, wishing well, has another, had another question. This, she may, the, her questions may have been addressed at the, at the first public meeting, uh, or excuse me, the first public hearing, uh, but it, I'm noting it here as well. Uh, we received an email from a woman named Rachel Brown uh, expressing concerns. Aaron Kirby of 5081 Mill Wheel Drive. And uh, uh, ob uh, objection from uh, Khalifa and LaShonda Boyd of 5211 Mosseri Lane. 
just want that so noted for the record. Change, does that change the percentage? No, I don't. No, I, no. No, and, and by the way, so when we when we move forward with the with the determination to to um, to undertake the project, that took the petition mass okay. off the table. All right, very good. Okay. Okay. Anything else from the board on this? Okay. Closing the hearing at six thirty two p.m. Okay. Mr. We'll Supervisor. On. Yes. Before you move into the consent agenda, I'm sorry, but um, when you guys approve the agenda, there's a resolution that Executive Coordinator Melissa Roberts would uh, like to add in. I think there's one in front of everybody, uh, Resolution 23-32. And the reason for the late notice on this is because we got our preliminary scoring back from some Department of Natural Resources grants. And so what we're trying to do, it has to be in by October 1st, any changes that we make to the grant request. We scored uh, fairly middle of the road and she spoke with our DNR grant coordinator today and we would like to make a change to um, the grant resolution, which would require a new resolution by the board. So I wish the board to consider it and it could be done uh, either as you know approval of the consent agenda although we don't typically put our resolutions in there or if you guys would consider reopening the agenda and make it agenda item number 9h for consideration uh, we would really appreciate it it may give us the opportunity uh, to get hundred and fifty thousand dollars to be used towards the playground uh, repairs out at the south pavilion at um, bicentennial park I failed to bring it up at the uh, approval of the agenda. I was just going to ask people at my report, but um, I would ask that uh, we open the agenda to add it as uh, an item under uh, nine, eight. nine eight. H. Okay. If, uh, uh, agenda amendment. That amendment to the agenda. I'll make that motion. Support. Okay. Okay. Motion by Bennett. Supported by Raritan. Supported by Raritan. Uh, have a, a record roll call on amending the agenda. Right. Oh, and, in, and inserting 23-32 as item 9H. Trustee White. Yes. Trustee Raritan. Yes. Trustee Fike. Yes. Trustee Hugo. Yes. Myself, yes. Uh, Supervisor Bennett. Yes. Six nothing, motion passes. We have added 9H. And now I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items. Mr. Fike makes that motion. Motion by uh, Fike. Supported by Ms. Hugo. Supported by Hugo on the consent agenda. Uh, Trustee Fike. Yes. Trustee White. Yes. Trustee Hugo. Yes. Trustee Raritan. Yes. Uh, myself, yes. Supervisor Bennett. Yes. Six nothing, motion passes. Thank you. Under old business, uh, our strategic planning update, uh, meeting recap, we met uh, past Thursday, went through the entire strategic plan, looked at uh, all of our accomplishments, looked at which items were still remaining on our uh, strategic plan that we haven't uh, uh, been able to uh, complete as of yet, or are in the process of completing. And then we also amended it to add a couple of the items. Uh, Mr. Limita probably has a report on that. We, um, in your packet, we included the uh, PowerPoint slides from the board's work session, uh, but also um, at all of your places, you should have the strategic plan review where I just tried to recap. I know a couple of board members were unable to be in attendance um, that evening. I can say that uh, the meeting was uh, fairly well um, fast-paced all of the uh, department directors were in attendance as well um, to offer input and uh, we went through the entire um, strategic plan uh, major goals community connectiveness and identity the community vitality and infrastructure um, for the most part, they were all carried forward, although there were some tweaks on a few code enforcement, for example. Uh, we feel like um, it's still a priority for enforcement, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a continued sub goal under community vitality. It just needs to be incorporated into the uh, planning and zoning administrator's um, normal job task. 
what we did commit is that we will provide increased uh, monthly reporting for code enforcement. So those open issues, those lingering ones that you tend to see that um, drive all of us crazy, you'll be getting a more uh, better update on those or a more frequent update on those about what's um, going on. So you may see it drop off our strategic plan, but it doesn't mean it dropped off as a priority item. You can read the rest of them. I think um, it was uh, fairly well received. We had excellent conversation about it. We're we're uh, going to tweak some of the strategies and tactics based on that conversation. Uh, so you'll see that as we go through the updates moving forward, we're going to try to um, be a little more engaging with the updates too. Uh, as department heads, we had a discussion about how we deliver it rather than maybe the full grids is that we do focus more on the accomplishments like what you saw in your packet and then the needs that we still have moving forward because I think it's so important um, to be able to celebrate uh, what has been accomplished and that's the whole point of strategic planning is that we focus on those main goals, what are the board's priorities, allow staff to carry them out and there's a lot to be uh, uh, you know, celebrated here with all of the things that the board has accomplished with their strategic plan since adopting it. Um, you guys are still together for another year and a half at least, hopefully beyond that. Uh, but take the time out to acknowledge the accomplishments because th this is why a lot of this got done is because of the plan. And um, just like say from staff's perspective, we appreciate the board's engagement on the strategic plan and the continued engagement. Thank you. Okay. Any comments, concerns? Is this Despite? on the website or a place where people can see this? It can be. Um, we can add that to where the strategic plan is. That's right. That'd be a good idea. Thanks, Joel. Okay, seeing no further questions or concerns on that topic, we will move on to new business. And item A, the board will consider resolution 23-21, creating a tax roll for the Wishing Well Special Assessment District. Any discussion? I'll make the motion. Okay, motion, motion by Mr. By, White. Motion supported by. Supported by Dr. Reardon. Motion by White, supported by Raritan. Okay, Trustee Hugo. Yes. Trustee Fike. Yes. Trustee Raritan. Yes. <clears throat> Trustee White. Yes. Myself, yes. Supervisor Bennett. Yes. Six nothing motion passes. Thank you. Item B, the board will consider resolution 23-30, opting into the Genesee County Park Recreation Open Space and Greenway Plan. Mr. Limita. This is really, we've done this process before. It's really a um, resolution that uh, says the township continues to seek collaboration with the Genesee County's uh, five-year um, plan. And it's the same thing. They uh, agreed to adopt ours when we went through this. We agreed to adopt theirs. It just shows the synergy of us working together with Genesee County Parks. And it's really a vote of support from this board uh, that we support their concept and what they intend to accomplish over the next five years. Okay. I'll make a motion. Okay, Mr. Fike makes the motion, supported by Mr. White. Okay, item 9B, motion by Fike, supported by White. Uh, Trustee Raritan. Yes. Trustee Hugo. Yes. Trustee White. Yes. Trustee Fike. Yes. Myself, yes. Supervisor Bennett. Yes. Six nothing, motion passes. Thank you. <clears throat> Item C, the board will consider resolution 23-31 to support the approval of a Metro Act permit for the installation and maintenance of fiber optic cable for Crown Castle LLC. Mr. Limita. So we got a uh, request from Crown Castle. Uh, what they want to do is install um, small uh, wireless facilities, but that doesn't, that's not included. That'll be a separate permit that they have to do. Um, but to get ready for that, they have to install fiber optic network. And the Metro Act allows them to do so. They sent us a check for $500, which is required as part of the application process. Uh, the board has to consider it. You would have to have an incredibly good reason to turn it down. This is primarily um, a uh, it, you know, just a formality. They apply, they want to pull fiber optic cable. We agree, they provide a map later. We have to supply it to the Michigan Public Service Commission. 
Um, they're kind of serious about it. If you ignored it, uh, the MPSC could fine you up to $40,000 per day for every day that you chose to ignore their application. Uh, and you'd have to have, like I said, a darn good reason why to reject it. The good news is we get um, $500 for it. And then we also get funds every year. It used to just be Metro Act funds. Now it's incorporated into the local community stabilization authority funds that we receive every year. Everybody, all of the telecommunications providers who do business within the right of way of the township pay into that fund and we receive a portion of that funding every year. Mr. Feig. Fiber optic cable. Forgive my ignorance. Now, is this something that would benefit homeowners or businesses or both? Both. What they intend to do is, is like kind of offer as resellers of cable services or telecommunication services, cell phone services. Um, it's just providing more options for competition uh, within the telecommunications industry within the township. Okay. We had uh, not, uh, not one, two, three also doing the same thing, and basically they provide the back <coughs> for everybody else from Comcast, AT&T, what have you. Those companies all pay a service fee to use their backbone. All right, somebody prepared to make a motion to approve this? I'll make the motion, Mr. Supervisor. Okay. Support? Support by Dr. Raritan. Support by Raritan. Okay, Trustee Fike. Yes. Trustee White. Yes. Trustee Hugo. Yes. Trustee Raritan. Yes. Um, myself, yes. Supervisor Bennett. Yes. Six nothing, motion passes. Item D, the board will consider a motion for zoning case number 674. One to uh, regulate, or I to regulate permitted and special land uses in the neighborhood commercial NC zoning district. We have Mr. Smith here. Good, Good evening. evening. So on the September 7th meeting, the Planning Commission held a public hearing for the zoning case uh, 674I uh, to regulate the principal permitted uses and special land uses in the neighborhood <laughs> zoning district. The amendment would permit all uh, principal permitted uses and special land uses of the OS and professional office zoning district as permitted uses and, and or special land uses in the NC zoning district. This is a cleanup. Uh, the zoning ordinance as it stands today in the general, com uh, general commercial zoning district has this language already in it, saying that anything that's basically down zoned underneath um, GC is allowed by permitted use or special land use. We've had a request from a applicant that we have this put into the book. So this is just a formality and we wanna clean up the book and there's that way there's no question going forward. The Planning Commission recommended approval to the Township Board with an eight to zero vote and the Planning and Zoning Department will recommend a motion for approval as presented. Okay. Do you care to have any questions or care to make a motion? Ms. Hugo makes the motion. Mr. Fike supports it. Okay, motion by Hugo, supported by Fike. Item 9D. Uh, Trustee White. Yes. Trustee Raritan. Yes. Trustee Fike. Yes. Trustee Hugo. Yes. Myself, yes. Uh, Supervisor Bennett. Yes. Six nothing, motion passes. Thank you. Item E, the board will consider a motion for zoning case number 674J to regulate the maximum height in the light industrial. I-1 district to match Tech Village uh, Park Zoning District. Yes, so the same September 7th meeting, the Planning Commission also had a public hearing for this to regulate the maximum height in the light industrial I-1 district to match the Tech Village Park Zoning District with the height maximum within 500 feet of I-75 right of way and no less than 150 feet from any residentially zoned property that the feet, the height could go from 50 feet to 75 feet to match the zoning that's already incorporated into the Tech Village zoning district. This is a cohesive, to make I-75 cohesive as possible with all of the new development that we hope to see in the near future. So that way all of I-75 through Grand Blank Township essentially could look the same. Planning Commission also recommended the Township Board for approval with an eight to zero vote and the Planning and Zoning Department would uh, recommend a motion for approval as presented. Okay. So do you mean the Grand Blank Enterprise Park? Is that what this is? Enterprise Park and Tech Village. 
They'd be the same height requirements. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. All right. I see quite a bit of construction out there. Okay, Ms. Hugo makes that motion. Hugo makes the motion supported, supported by, by Fike. Fike. Correct. Okay, Trustee Hugo. Yes. Trustee Fike. Yes. Trustee Raritan. Yes. Trustee White. Yes. Myself, yes. Supervisor Bennett. Yes. Six nothing, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Item F, the board will consider a motion to approve the 2023 tax rate request form L4029. Mr. Limita. Every year uh, we have to submit our anticipated uh, tax uh, millage requests uh, to the county and the form 4029 um, is uh, what you're approving uh, so that we can submit it to them by September 30th, I believe is the, is the date. One of the questions on here that comes up when you look at it is the fact that the police millage is on here with the rolled back amount of 0.9783 mills. We know that we have a ballot question coming out to increase that police millage. We would have to amend the 4029 if that ballot question is approved by the voters and then submit that. But you can do that as well during the truth and taxation uh, hearing that you'll open up during your budget adoption in November. Okay. <coughs> Any questions or concerns? You care to make that motion? Um, Mr. White Mr. makes the White motion. makes the motion. I'll support. Okay. <laughs> motion and support. Uh, Trustee Fike. Yes. <coughs> Trustee White. Yes. Trustee Hugo. Yes. Trustee Raritan. Yes. Um, myself. Yes. Supervisor Bennett. Yes. Six nothing. Motion passes. Thank you. Item G, the board will consider a motion to approve a proposed construction agreement between the Township and Genesee County Road Commission to repair a failing storm sewer on Timberline Court. Mr. Limita. This is uh, a request that uh, some residents had made noticing that the storm sewer out there is flooding the area because there is a piece of crushed storm sewer pipe uh, in this neighborhood. The road commission went out there and looked at it and said, if we can use the 50-50 allocation funds for this repair, they can get out there and get it done. As proposed, it would cost the township $31,000 out of our 50-50 allocation funds and cost the road commission also $31,000. We do recommend that you move it through because it will address uh, the flooding issue for that uh, um, subdivision. Okay, Mr. Or Dr. Reardon makes that motion. Supported Reardon by Reardon makes Hugo. the motion, supported by Hugo. Uh, <laughs> Trustee Hugo. Yes. <clears throat> Trustee Fike. Yes. Trustee Reardon. Yes. Trustee White. Yes. Uh, myself, yes. <clears throat> Supervisor Bennett. Yes. Six nothing, motion passes. Thank you. Yeah, now item H that uh, we added, uh, resolution 23-22, I believe. Um, yes, resolution 23-32. Oh, I'm sorry, 23-32. 32. With regard to the uh, Grand Blank resolution to support the Michigan Recreation Passport grant application. Good evening. Good evening, Ms. Roberts. Um, so this is a resolution that's required by the grant. Um, we are updating the scope of our grant and in order to do that and update the cost structure, um, we need an additional resolution from what we did before. And it's pretty much as simple as that. Okay. Yes, Mr. This Biden. would be for new swings, or what, what are you doing in that little so thing? So what the scope is, is a new playground near the South Pavilion, um, a pathway, so it's accessible um, all the way around the playground. It includes several accessible features along with a uh, pour in place. Is that right? Rubber, yes, um, un structure underneath. So it, people can just, you know, if they have a wheelchair, they can wheel right in. Um, it also includes uh, concrete pads or asphalt pads for ADA parking. 
that we don't ha currently have, um, and the pathway would just go right from there. Also some um, sustainable benches, recycling bins, some signage. Okay, sounds great. So yeah, the, the that playground equipment is well beyond its uh, life expectancy. Uh, definitely, yes. And this is part of our um, ma our recreation master plan. Okay, thank you, Ms. Roberts. Anybody care to make the motion? Okay, Mr. Fike makes the motion, supported by Mr. White. Motion by Fike, supported by White. Trustee Raritan. Yes. Trustee Hugo. Yes. Trustee White. Yes. Trustee Fike. Yes. Myself, yes. Supervisor Bennett. Yes. Six nothing motion passes. Thank you. Um, future agenda items, any comment on that? Uh, yes. I have a few things. For future agenda items? For our board reports, I'm sorry. Okay, all right. We'll get right to that, but uh, Mr. Lima, anything that we want to cover at next meeting or Ms. Roberts? At the um, next meeting, we're going into October. Like I said, we will intend to do uh, at your next meeting a update. We'll have some department heads here um, for the fiscal year 2024 uh, budget to see if there's um, any adjustments or any questions that we can answer uh, as we move forward. We have plenty of time to get through. It's got to be approved before the end of the year. Um, but we would like to uh, have, you know, kick that off with, again, I don't think I need to walk through every single department. We can do that if you'd like, but I think we can do a broad overview and then have everybody here and available for questions that the board might want to have answered during that evening. Um, and then we can, again, provide further information moving out. Uh, so we'll do that. And then I'm not sure we're a strategic planning item where we're at. DPW and fire department. And we should know uh, what the costs are at that time. And I'm going to ask our project managers from Plant Brand Caressa to attend as well um, to answer any questions that the board might have based upon those um, estimated costs of the projects. All right, now moving to board reports. Mr. Fike. Yes, as you know, we're a member of Metro, yes. which is the consolidation of all the governments in Genesee County, and they all have reports. And on their agenda, there were a couple of things this month that dealt specifically with us in Grand Blanc Township. One did not. It was a thing that I just wanted to mention, that they are proposing a statewide housing strategy to address the housing issues in the state of Michigan. The Genesee County has determined there's a shortage of 7,000 housing units of all different types. And so they are going to work with communities first to come up with a plan for housing for Genesee County. Also, they had some road things in there that uh, Grand Blake Township, you know, uh, we may want to hear. Maybe information you already know, but kind of a reinforcing of what's ahead for next year. They said from 24 to 25, that Perry Road Trail uh, from Whitetail Drive to Vancouver uh, would be started. <coughs> the funding has been awarded by MDOT, so there's no question on the funding there. It's over a million dollars. They said in 2025, Embry Road and Cook, a separated pathway, $1.1 million. They will vote on this, and it'll be all federal funds. Um, in 2024, which will be next year, Grand Blanc Road from Fenton to west of Porter. And in 2024, which also is next year, Saginaw Road from the county line to 600 feet north of McCandlish, $1.2 million. Just FYI. And then finally, our best favorite road, Cook Road, in 2024, from Embry to Holly, is scheduled to be rebuilt. rebuilt. $1.1 million. Very good. Okay. Except that report lines. Okay. And one thing to keep in mind uh, when people ask, you know, when they, the, why are we waited so long for Cook Road? Um, the reason is that thing was paved over basically gravel. There was no under substructure or anything. And uh, so every time, the clay is horrible. It, it, you know, doesn't uh, drain water well, so mm -hmm. with every freeze and thaw, the road goes up and down, and they just kept throwing more asphalt on it. 
Any other board reports? The uh, just real quick, uh, the fitness court. And talking to uh, Sonia and Matt, October tenth, did we say at ten a.m. Right? We're going to have uh, the ribbon cutting October tenth, ten a.m. We have the police getting involved. We have, uh, I think, uh, several other groups uh, coming out to help with that. And so we encourage all the board members <coughs> to make it to uh, join us for that event. Um, I haven't been out there to see it, but it's it's been installed and it's ready to go. Uh, Fred Pavandi, I uh, was at the uh, Road Commission this morning for Genesis County Road Commission meeting, and uh, this is Fred's uh, last uh, couple of meetings. He will be retiring at the end of the month. He's the director, as most of you know. He's done a fabulous job. Um, we'll see uh, where the board goes. They, they had decided to have the uh, second in command take over, but they had, a, they had a unanimous vote to have the second person in command take over. But today the board met and reversed that vote. And so now they're going to uh, uh, have some other thoughts on who they're going to hire for that. So it really uh, caused a lot of uh, concern amongst the supervisors after the meeting. Um, let's see here. Um, I met informally with uh, a group of residents from Parkwood uh, Mobile Home Park, and we'll get an update from Mr. Limita on the, uh, the water situation and paying their bill, what have you. Um, also, with regard to the uh, rumor that uh, somebody put on social media that I've been getting numerous uh, texts and emails, there is no roundabout planned for the intersection of Dort Hill and Saginaw. Uh, if anybody has seen the, the post, but they had a picture of what it would look like and all this, and it's, I'm not sure where they got it from or what have you, but uh, it's on several Facebook pages, what have you, um, and there, there are no plans the Road Commission has, nor the township, to put a roundabout. It would be pretty crazy at that intersection to try and bring those three roads together for a roundabout. Um, yeah, and I, th I guess the point is, you know, and it goes without saying, don't believe everything you see on social media. If just because it's on Facebook and it looks like an official rendering doesn't mean that that's true. You know, all these people are saying, how could they do this and all this stuff? And it's like, wait. Then, you know, Scott's later on saying, excuse me, nobody's ever approved this. This is made up. So uh, somebody was, you know, yeah. bored one night and decided to screw with a lot of people. And, uh, yeah, hey, he did. It's bizarre <laughs> that the things start showing up. It's just yeah. like, where in the world did this come from? Yeah. Um, but I got to say, going back to the meeting with Parkwood, I uh, really enjoyed uh, meeting with the, the residents there. Uh, very cordial, um, very nice meeting with, with the residents. Uh, they would even like to see some kind of uh, crime watch they had mentioned. Uh, and I, our police chief here uh, would be glad to talk to you about how to do that. And uh, they would like to see their, their uh, mobile home park improved in terms of uh, the quality of living. I know Mr. Smith uh, had our code enforcement over there, and uh, Mr. Smith would be who you want to speak with on the code enforcement over there. So um, with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Limita, and he can probably tell you in his report a little bit more about Parkwood. I, I mean, I can tell you this is what I know about Parkwood. I had a, uh, it, it took us a while to be able to um, get a response back, and that was where our frustration came. Uh, because we didn't, we got ghosted. Nobody returned um, emails, phone calls, voicemail messages, snail mail, and certified mail. Uh, absolutely zero response. And so um, that was a frustrating part. I know there's been some information out there that's saying there is absolutely no way that we could ever turn off the water to Parkwood Mobile Home. Uh, that's 100% false. We absolutely could, and we could have done it at any point during this process when they were that far behind. We, um, however, the reason that we didn't do that, uh, that the township could have gone that way and went through the circuit court route instead was because out of an abundance of caution for the homeowners, we knew since they weren't responding to us that they were not sending that information out to the residents of Parkwood. And so the board made the decision to move uh, it towards a circuit court through legal counsel instead. That way there would have been plenty of notice if a judge had ordered the shutoff. Um, and that's why we went that route was so that 
uh, this board was making sure that it was uh, that it wasn't. You guys weren't going to get surprised and find out on Monday morning when you turned your tap on that there was no water coming out. Uh, that did lead then um, to the news stories that came out, which helped with the owner who then called and spoke with interim DPS director uh, Greg Boggs and myself uh, to claim that it was um, all a misunderstanding, that they, he hadn't realized um, where it had gotten, and he has pledged to make additional payments, minimum of $20,000 a month. So their average uh, monthly bill is running between eight and $12,000, depending on usage. Uh, $20,000 a month will help them catch up within the first quarter of next year. I think currently it was at about $82,000 that were remaining. It had been up to as, uh, you know, well over $100,000. So they're making progress. He pledged that it will be made a minimum of $20,000 each and every month. Uh, the last payment was made on September 6th, so I will be looking for a payment no later than October 6th um, to make sure that they're staying there. Uh, because of that, we suspended service for the um, lawsuit in circuit court, but we will uh, automatically, if we don't receive payment or any confirmation from the owners, I do have a cell phone number now, uh, we will let them know that we are starting the service back up. We will serve them and move forward with the lawsuit. Um, again, our goal is to make sure that uh, the rate payers for Grand Blanc Township don't get burned on a very large utility bill, but also that the residents of, of Parkwood. And I did remind the owner when I spoke with him the investment uh, that we were able to make in improving those streets using CDBG funds. Uh, the community development block grant funds to get those streets fixed on the way into Parkwood, trying to say that as a township, we haven't turned our back. We want to continue to improve. And one of the goals of this board and their strategic plan is to continue to invest in the north end of our township to make sure that it's getting the attention that it needs. Um, he did acknowledge that he has been there. He has saw the road improvement. Um, and I think that sends a very strong message from our standpoint that we haven't turned our backs on the north end and especially not on Parkwood. We're here as um, a resource and we'll continue to work. Code enforcement, Jeremy, raise your hand so they know who you are. Um, you know, with code enforcement issues, you can ask for Jeremy Smith or the Planning and Zoning Administrator. Um, this maybe has opened up a great dialogue where uh, we can work together and maybe uh, help some other areas of improvement over there uh, for the residents. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Lima, to, uh, with regard to you know further any legal action in the future, it would also ensure that the residents uh, made them aware that they would be made aware if there is any legal action that, that we end up taking due to lack of payment so that they know plenty of advance warning before, you know, you know, if that if that happens, we will notify them that we've filed in court, you know, for non-payment. So, you're exactly right. We, we certainly at this in this forum, we will discuss that and make that known. And by the way, congratulations to you and the board for we wanted to get the word out two weeks ago, and you got the word out the next day. So, if something were to go awry, then then that same process would right. play out. Yeah. So, okay. Any other? Board comments? Yes. No. no. Okay. No, I don't. Okay. No, the young lady out there had one, but about Parkwood. How about after the meeting? We'll cover them if you would. All right. Is a motion to adjourn in order, Mr. Supervisor? It is. Then I will make that motion. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned at 7.05 p.m.